Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well enough. So, personality, it's what makes us unique, right? Well, maybe not as much as you might think. Let's give it some thought. Google its definition. You'll find a bunch of explanations, but most revolve around the idea of a combination of your traits, beliefs, and your narrative. And generally speaking, the process to get there tends to be seen as a cognitive learning process. Learning from others' lessons or examples, or from our studies or experiences, then we render those into some beliefs and ideas that we like to think of as the best ideals we could have. It's a reasonable explanation, but it doesn't consider the unconscious thought processes that exploit how we consciously think about life. So let's get psychoanalytic on it. Since birth, all our experiences trigger desires and fears that fuel our fantasies and influence how we integrate our experiences. And what impacts this the most is the desire to be like someone relevant to us. This can be one or many people. In a future video, I'll explore the fear of identifying with someone we resent, which creates a personality based on the denial of traits we relate to that person. Now, identifying with someone is something we do all the time. For example, when we are kids, we pretend to have the same jobs as our parents, we become fans of the same sports team as our grandpa, or as teenagers, we wear the same clothes as our friends because we want to fit in, we want them to like us, and we want to be like those we feel are the most admired by the group. It's a natural and healthy process of our internal growth, but it's not that simple and sometimes it can go wrong. To go deeper, I'll reference a Portuguese psychoanalyst who deserves much appreciation and recently passed away, Antonio Quimbert Mach. His approach has similarities to other psychoanalysts' theories, but today I'll stick to him. He divided the identification into three types which occur in phases as they are of different degrees of maturity. In the first stage, in early childhood, when we have no self-knowledge because we lack life experience, we identify ourselves to the image people portray of us. Things like, my daughter will be a great dancer, or he's a, such a difficult child. I feel I am what people say about me. And how people see us inevitably determines how we are dealt with. Now, this may be helpful if we deal with people who do a good job of identifying our spontaneous traits. However, if we are a target of many projections, we will unconsciously create a distorted image of ourselves. For example, if I am the girl who is destined to be a great ballerina because my parents think that sounds fancy, but what I really like is, for example, playing the drums, then the way I see myself will sooner or later become distressed. In the second stage, and from the image we began to grow of ourselves, we tend to seek models. People we see are like us, so we want to be more like them and expect them to keep up with that role. Or people we feel we should be more like and we want to incorporate their traits and we may even somehow envy their qualities. So it is both a need and a demand. This is what prevails in contemporary society. It's the era of influencers and wanting to be like someone. We take courses on how to be like the most spiritually enlightened monk or read books on how to be like the wealthiest stock investor. We really, really humbly want to be the best. Again, nothing wrong with taking courses and being inspired by others, as long as we approach that as a way of investing in what we see in ourselves and not as a way of compensating for a sense of low self-worth. But there's a third stage, a degree of maturity that would be the healthiest. It is identification with the self, to our desires, to our dreams, to our achievements. This is growth by recognizing internal information and exercising our abilities. To this last degree, I wouldn't necessarily call it identification, as it's not a, the appropriation of external traits, but instead a recognition of internal elements. That is an identity of authorship, rather than creating a compilation of the parts we swipe from other people's personality. So, do you feel the need to be like someone you admire? Do you lust for their qualities? Do you live by what others say of you? Well, maybe you should give yourself a little bit more credit. Think about it.